Hi guys, I'm just going to go through the SS1 consultation form. Uh, this serves as a bit of a tutorial on how to fill it out and uh, I will also explain a little bit as to why the questions are the way that they are. Um, in terms of how long it will take you, it depends on how much information you have to hand, but I would suggest that uh, you watch this video and download the PDF to get a really good idea of what's inside so that you can maybe even think about collating some of that information before you make a purchase for the SS1 consultation. So page one is mostly basic information. The key things here are weight uh, and body fat percentage. So make sure your weigh-in is done in the morning, uh, no clothes, after you've been to the bathroom and before you've had breakfast. Also, if you've had high carbohydrates and sodium, higher than normal the day before, uh, that might not be the best time to do a weigh-in because those nutrients will pull in additional water into your body, into extracellular space, into muscles, into your skin, intestines and things like this. So you might have an artificially high weight. So just make sure that however you eat normally is the way that you've eaten before you do that weigh-in so that we're not working off any sort of, you know, slightly misleading data. And the last bit is just support. You know, if you already have a really good physio that you're working with, uh, it saves me the hassle of having to uh, source one for you that's local to your area. Page two is life setup. So this is where I get a little bit of an understanding about how you're operating uh, outside of the gym. The outcomes of coming home to sort of five kids having, uh, you know, who are very excited to see their mum or dad is very different to coming home to an empty flat where you've got full control of your entire evening. So this life setup situation is, is pretty important. Moving on to wellness. The situation here is I, I want to understand how much how full is your bucket? How much can I extract out of you beyond what you're delivering at the moment? If you're at full capacity and you're saying to me that you need to uh, uh, try and lose another 10 kilos, for example, um, this page is going to help me to understand sort of where your stress might come from. Um, you might not necessarily be anxious. You might have low anxiety. Um, your digestive health might be very good. Your perceived physical energy might be you know, let's say it's quite high, but your mental energy might be a bit low. So this is actually kind of important. I don't necessarily want someone who hasn't got much mental energy to do uh, super heavy squats and deadlifts, which are quite technical. I might think that, you know, for that reason alone, uh, based on some of the physiological data that's out there, we could probably get away with dialing back the weights a little bit in terms of their mass and upping the volume so that you don't have to be sort of cognitively aroused by, you know, how much, you know, if you're doing a heavy squat, you need to be really ultra focused. Um, if, if you've got not much mental energy, I need to think, well, do I really want someone who's got low mental energy, who's really stressed about loads of stuff to sort of exert themselves through something which is very neurologically difficult? I might think, hmm, let's, let's give their muscles some work, but let's give their nervous system a little bit of a, a slightly more restful situation. So we go for metabolic stress rather than neurological stress. As we move on to training, I really need those step counts. I need that information for sure, because that's one of the fundamental things that I need to understand is your activity level. Uh, it's better that you find your step count before you start filling out this page. If you don't know your sort of 10 rep max on barbell squats and deadlifts, um, then that's fine. It, it would be good if you could find out, but if no one's taught you how to squat and deadlift, then I don't want you going and doing it because uh, that would be inappropriate. I only want to know if, if, if you're already uh, familiar with these kind of movements, so don't feel bad about leaving certain things out. Going on to um, the fifth page, right? This is actually really important because this is the thing that tells me what kind of movements you should be doing now versus later and what mobility patterns and sort of release sequences we need to do in order to have you achieving technical movements. If I was filling out this form, I've got, uh, let's say, a old dislocation on my right shoulder. That's an old injury, um, but it's not painful. So in this case, it wouldn't fill any of these blocks. It works perfectly fine. I can overhead press, I can punch, I can you know, do throws in jujitsu or whatever I want to do, and it's no problem at all. Um, but my little finger on my right hand was dislocated 
three weeks ago after doing some uh, some sparring, and then it was popped back in again, and now it works, but it's not uh, it's not 100% functional, and it's still a bit painful. So I would put that down as um, a new injury going through the rehab phase because I'm still trying to mobilize and strengthen it. Um, it's also painful and there is also some tension. So in this case, I would scroll down until I find the right hand. I'm pain-free, let's say, except for this with this one problem I've got. Well, I need to go down. I've got tension, pain, and it's a new injury. So I'm gonna to go to right hand, tension, pain, and an injury there, and that's it. That's how you fill out the form. So make sure you get as much information here as possible. If there's long-term uh, issues with tension or pain, that you've sort of made peace with, please just put them to those down as well. Uh, a lot of people have uh, tension in their trapezius muscles, like in their, their upper back and, and base of their neck. It is my job to figure out how to release that. Uh, so just make sure you include everything. It's better that I've got a bit too much information than not enough. Next page would be nutrition. What, what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm not trying to burden you with too much detail, fill out things like my fitness pal, do two, three, four, even five days of a food diary to, to get the average um, sort of ready to uh, you know get, get an average understanding of how much protein you're having per day and things like that. The first question is actually to do a visit a training day or a rest day or both. Uh, the reason why I ask this is because my programming, for, well, when it comes to nutrition at least, will relate to fuel for the work required, which means that if you have a training day, which is basically burning a lot of energy on high intensity activities, I'm going to program the macronutrient profile slightly differently. So I might say, right, on my training day, I'm gonna have, uh, I don't know, let's say 300 grams of carbohydrates. Uh, I'm gonna have, uh, roughly speaking, 160 grams of protein, and I might have about 70 grams of fat. Okay, so that's gonna be my training day. I'm just kind of breezing through it at the moment, but it's better that you actually fill out something properly and then get an average intake value for basically what you're consuming each day. So that way I've got a bit of an understanding up front about what's going on and we can go into greater detail at a later stage in the consultation. If you're only eating sort of one meal a day, that meal needs to be pretty damn good. It needs to make sure, well, we need to make sure that meal has everything that you need in it. Um, for example, you might be doing a sort of fasting protocol. Uh, you might eat sort of six times a day because uh, we were all told to keep the body, um, you know, keep, keep the metabolism running and things like that. Um, in which case it's more of a sort of management situation. It's what are, what's in all of those meals? Are they, are they meals? Are they snacks? And you know, are, are they really helping you? As we go to the bottom, there's a little bit on supplements, but don't worry too much. It, it, just fill this out as best you can. These are the main supplements that I need to know about straight away. This is gonna help me even more to see if there's any gaps in your nutritional profile. Now, when it comes to history, um, you can see that I've actually filled this one out already. You can see that I've got 60 kilos when I was 20 years old, um, and then I started training, and then five years later, I was up at 80 kilos. I actually went a little bit further than that, but I'd say 80 is closer to where I was than 85. And then I found my happy weight at about 75. This journey where you can see it's gone from 60 to 80 to 75 to 75. If I then go to someone and say, you know, I've got to, I want to try and gain uh, five kilos. I want to get to 80. Um, and you look at this kind of sequence on the screen, you think, well, you know, that's actually not a big deal. The, the guy was obviously 80 kilos when he was 25 years old. He's trying to gain a bit more muscle again. I assume he wants to be fairly lean at 80 kilos. So I suppose it's possible, but there's a lot of factors here because uh, gaining that much muscle after being 60 kilos is quite tough. But then if we change this, and let's say that story, that, that historical body weight story changes to something like this, 95 at 20 years old, 90 at 25 years old, um, 80, at 30 years old and now 75 at 35, that same person who has the same goal is actually in a very different situation. That person's been very big in the past and now they want to get back up to 80 kilos. If I'm dealing with that person, yeah, that's actually, I'm quite confident we can get more muscle onto that guy 
but the guy who was 60 kilos, me, well, yeah, that's a bit of a, a harder, harder uh, process to go through. Then we've got the last page here, which I've already filled out, which is goals. What I'm trying to do is find out if you have mixed messages in your mind. For example, fat loss. Let's say that's a primary goal. Muscle gain. Okay. And I want to gain strength. It's like, okay. These three things are all possible to do together at the same time if you haven't trained before. If you've been training quite a while and you've been doing strength training, for example, you want to gain fat, sorry, you want to gain uh, muscle and strength, and you also want to lose fat at the same time. Yeah, okay, we can do that. But it's not going to be optimal. If you came to me and said, I'm 25% I'm body fat, and I want to gain muscle strength and I want to lose fat. I'm probably going to tell you to start with the fat loss. I'm going to say, look, let's forget about muscle gain for the moment. Let's keep fat loss as your primary goal. And let's keep strength and cardio endurance up there as your primary goals as well. Because cardio endurance is going to correlate with fat loss. Fat loss is basically going to happen when your cardio endurance goes up through the training that we're going to be delivering. Then we think, okay, maybe what we can do as well is through the strength training, we can also correct posture. And as the warm up sequence for our strength training and our cardio, we can actually do some great rehab and function work. So a primary goal with fat loss, strength, cardio endurance, posture correction and rehab function makes quite a lot of sense. Then we can bounce muscle gain into the secondary goal and say, right, do you know what? Let's do muscle gain, but let's get you down to sub 15% body fat first. Let's keep you there for a second. And then what we'll do is we'll start building some more carbohydrates into your diet and sort of signal for anabolism once your body is optimized, you know, once you've got that sort of lean physique where you've got everything working just right and you've got a nice aesthetic appearance that you wanted. Um, and whatever it else, whatever other goals um, you had in mind. And then let's say that we've got a tertiary goal, which is that one day you want to try and do, I don't know, start playing football again. Um, then we might put that into the third category because I'm thinking, well, you know, I want to get your, your muscle up a little bit more before you get back into that sport for whatever reason. Maybe it's to do with uh, injury prevention, who knows? But um, the mission behind page eight is to make sure that you've got this self-awareness of like, what is the plan? What am I really trying to do here? And when should it be done? And it's about you and I uh, discussing that and me giving you my sort of expert opinion on the matter and you saying, well, do you know what, Felix? I really do think that this is the most important thing to me. And then we move forward together. The last thing really, because the last two uh, pages are nine and 10, which is just a par Q and declaration. So we don't really need to go through those. But this last question um, on this uh, consultation form is the level of investment. Now, the sort of uh, tagline for SS1 performance is project managing your body. Now, every project uh, requires a budget and the shape of the project um, will be determined by how much of a budget there is. So in this case, we need to understand, you know, what are you willing to spend in order to achieve these things? If you are based in uh, Miami, for example, or Dubai or, or London, uh, these places are all fairly expensive um, in terms of if you wanted to get a sports massage or physiotherapy uh, or a personal trainer. These are uh, areas that, you know, it's going to cost you several hundred pounds to work with someone for a few sessions in most cases. Um, so I do need to understand if you know how much money uh, you're willing to invest over the coming three to six months. I want to make sure that if I'm recommending different professionals to you, that I'm not just recommending guys who are really, really good uh, when that doesn't work for your budget. So uh, this is quite an important question, which again, I hope you uh, can kind of think about. Um, and, uh, and yeah, hopefully this kind of gives you a bit of an idea on how to fill out the form and a little bit of the background as to why 
all of the questions are shaped in this way. So if you're unsure about anything, uh, feel free to watch the video again or, or email um, info at ss1performance.com. Mm -hmm.